Good morning, everyone. So uh, am I audible at the back and not too loud, not too low? Yeah. It's cool? OK. So uh, my name is Ashutosh Trivedi. And uh, today's uh, talk is solving logical puzzles with natural language processing. But before that, I want to share a story. Uh, uh, back in 2013, uh, when I was a grad student at IIIT Bangalore, I, was, I, w I didn't know about PyCon at all. And I actually didn't know about open source at all. So by coming here, uh, there were a few of my friends said uh, there is a conference called PyCon. And I said, why there is a conference for a language? Uh, is it really required? So when I came here and I saw that how a community drives uh, the language and uh, uh, for uh, betterment of all the uh, language, then I got to know that, yeah, uh, this is something even I wanted to do. And, uh, I got involved with a few of open source uh, projects, and it was a great learning experience. So uh, I just want to give a round of applause to all those, uh, uh, all those developers out there and, uh, and uh, awesome uh, conference like this. So yeah, thank you. So uh, before I start the talk, uh, I want to uh, just uh, brief, uh, give a brief introduction about uh, uh, what this talk is about and what this talk is not about. Uh, because in natural language processing, uh, it's actually a uh, very heavy research uh, topic, and uh, there is lots of new research coming along every uh, day. So all the things which I'll be talking about, uh, natural language processing, are the things uh, which were in research papers just uh, either uh, one year back or this year. So things are pretty fresh and pretty new, and people are still experimenting with it. Nothing has been uh, went into production till now. So and uh, since it involves, uh, uh, so uh, there is a club between machine learning, deep learning, and natural language processing, which is uh, the current uh, research status. So I won't go, go into mathematical details. The talk will actually motivate you to uh, start working on it, start exploring these things, and uh, do some cool stuff around it. So uh, I'll start. Uh, uh, let me just uh, have an idea of the crowd. How many people are actually working with natural language processing? Uh, machine learning, deep learning, very few. OK, cool. So uh, I'll be going through basics. And uh, if you have any problem, uh, we'll be taking questions at the end. And if you want to do math, I'll be outside. We'll sit and uh, do math. OK. So uh, so. Uh, I start with what is actually uh, natural language processing and how does it start it. So when uh, when we uh, so language was always there with us. Why is not okay? So language was always there with us. As soon as we got computers, we wanted to understand language uh, programmatically. Why? It's a very obvious answer because computer uh, needs an interface, and what is the best interface rather than our own language, right? So moving forward. Uh, uh, we built something uh, which was there that how can we understand language programmatically so that we can do automation and we can have computers do stuff around natural language. So these were the things uh, which people were doing and uh, which is there right now. So what we can do with uh, natural language since our grammar uh, has a rule. So we can actually follow those rules and uh, say uh, we can cal we can uh, we can compute part of speech tags for each word. Uh, if, if, so I'm taking English language as uh, the basic, and all these talk will be focused on that. And there will be different rules and different set of things around different languages, say German and, or Sanskrit, which are heavily grammar oriented. So, so we know our part of speech. We also know our vocabulary. Our vocabulary is uh, growing every day, but it's, it's still, uh, uh, we can store all of that. And n-gram is a thing which, uh, which we can apply on any language. n-gram can be a bigram, tigram, or uh, uh, more than that. So it, it won't uh, consider a word as a word. Every word will be broken into, if it's a bigram, then two word, uh, two character words will be bigrams across the sentences. And uh, word style is uh, capitalization or non-caps, all caps, these kind of things, and noun detection. And we, uh, this is a complicated problem, but still we can uh, detect nouns. So these are the things we were doing uh, to identify that how we can do some thing around uh, natural language. 
So given a sentence, uh, can you process that sentence and how can you process that sentence so that you can get some information out of it? And if I'm talking about information, what computers can do, they can chunk numbers. So every information which is, which is there, which is called unstructured data, which is text, image, video. So as this talk is focused on text, what you can do with uh, text and how can you convert it to numbers so that you can process it, right? So let's, uh, let's, uh, let's go a sentence. Uh, if there is a sentence, let's go word by word. Uh, so currently what is uh, state of the art uh, two years ago was uh, researchers was actually doing this. They were calculating, uh, so if you go word by word, you have current word, you have previous word, next word, current word, n-gram, previous word, n-gram, and pause text, surrounding pause text, word shapes, surrounding word shape, and anything around it. So uh, there are lots of things you can uh, do with it, and uh, you can actually convert everything into numbers. So by numbers, I mean indexes. So uh, a current word is an index in your vocabulary. Similarly, your next word, even a pause tag, you can, you can create an index. So it's, it's all uh, getting into that, and this all will generate some information. And that information is used to understand that sentence. So if a sentence has 10 words, for each word, we'll calculate this much information, create a feature out of it, and do something. So if I say feature, let's, uh, let's say there is a sentence, and uh, it has all these features. So we calculated all these features, and they are in numbers. So what we can do with that? If I, if I go forward with a machine learning model, so let's say uh, I just want to know what is the sentiment of that uh, sentence. So for that, I need to tag few sentences before so that we can learn, right? So suppose uh, sentence one uh, will uh, calculate that uh, this is the uh, vector. If I, if I have um, n features, so it will be uh, n dimensional vector, and that n dimensional vector has a tag, okay? And we have some weights associated with each uh, feature. So every feature has some importance to identify the tag. So as soon as we, uh, we got exposed to more and more uh, training data, these weights will be adjusted. And this weight will be actually the weight of hyperplane uh, separating all those, uh, separating these two classes. So with each, uh, with each uh, training set, that hyperplane will adjust and try to fit the model so that uh, the negative ones will be at one, uh, at one side of the hyperplane and positive ones will be at the one other side of the hyperplane. As soon as you finish training your model, once you get the sentence, a new sentence, you again calculate the features, just plug in those weights, and uh, your hyperplane will tell you that uh, it falls into positive category or, or a negative category. So it's a very simplistic uh, way of uh, explaining a machine learning algorithm, how it works and how it will, it will work on unstructured data. So what are your thoughts on that? Uh, what we are actually doing is uh, through natural language processing and our set of rule with lots of processing, we calculate uh, data features. And through machine learning, we just, cal we just optimize that weight. We just uh, learn that hyperplane, right? So these two uh, fields, if they combine, you can understand your data better. <laughs> But uh, there is a problem. Is it scalable? It's not at all scalable. There will be new languages, and our language vocabulary will increase. And we are talking about AI here. Machine learning is, is one of the field which is uh, right now leading in AI. Uh, it's one, of, one, one school of thought. So what is wrong with that? The wrong thing is we are doing lots of processing. And that processes are actually dumb processes. So if you are calculating uh, part of speech tag for a sentence. It's a process, it's a standard program which run and uh, which will fail if you have any non-standard thing. Similarly, other features, suppose I'm calculating 50 features and, uh, and if, you, if you assume every feature is a process, we have 50 processes running, generating some data, feeding it to um, an optimization algorithm which will run the, uh, your hyperplane. So it's, it's not at all scalable plus uh, it's not iterative. Uh, as soon as you have new data, you have to again do the same thing. So, uh, so something is wrong with that, and researchers also find out that yeah, something is going wrong, and we are not scaling up in NLP. So, whatever the research was there for last ten years was actually superseded by last two years research, which was 
uh, introduction of deep learning into uh, natural language processing. So uh, we hit the basic first. How do we represent a word? So when I said we'll process a word, and uh, if we process if we process a sentence, and I say we will process it word by word. So there is an inline, inline uh, uh, problem with that. Uh, our word representation are actually very weak. So how do we represent a word? Suppose uh, I say uh, we'll build indexes. So if, if we have a vocabulary, and if if there is a word which is called nice, and it it comes as a thirtieth uh, index. So we'll create a one hot vector. So this vector is called one hot. Um, it's it's zero 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 and one at the place uh, where where its index is. So thirtieth index is one. Rest all all are zero. So dimension of the vector is your uh, size of the vocabulary. So this is how you represent. Suppose a word is nice, which is at thirtieth place, and word is um, good, which is at forty fifth place. So with this representation, can we say these two are actually same? We cannot. So the main problem is how do we represent the word? Our word representation does not convey any information about that word. We calculate it. Uh, we calculate information about the word by the surrounding uh, surrounding neighborhood words. So if we uh, uh, if we improve our uh, uh, representation of word, we'll be saving a lot of computation and we'll be doing some more uh, analysis on top of that. So there was an answer for that earlier, and people uh, people actually thought about it, and they created wordnets. So wordnets are uh, a tree or a graph, you can say, and they ca they actually capture the hierarchical information about all these uh, uh, all these words. So uh, so if you have awesome, good, nice, okay, it's a hierarchy, and they are connected, and their distance uh, tells you that how good they are connected, and there are nouns also, but. Uh, there is a problem with wordnets too. It's it's a lot of manual labor by linguists. So they created over the period of time, and Princeton has highest wordnet right now. You can access it, and I'll be showing Python uh, how we can do it with Python. So wordnets has problem for it's actually a lot of manual labor. Scalability issues will be again there, and as soon as you have new words, how do you associate those new words to previous words? Again, you have to do a lot of computation, and there will be a lot of validation from Linguists and they may not agree. So if LOL lol has to come into WordNet, so how do you uh, connect it? And few people will not even agree that it's not even a word. So there are lots of things has to go in, into that, uh, which is language specific. And the biggest problem is nouns. We have we are generating nouns every day. So uh, how do you uh, how do you incorporate all the nouns in that? And how do you say that this noun is actually similar to that noun? So all these problems are there. Uh, I'll just uh, I'll just give you a demo of uh, wordnets through Python. NLTK is a natural language processing library in uh, Python. Uh, through NLTK, you can see that uh, uh, they have these uh, wordnets saved into that in Corpus, and you can access those wordnets. Uh, okay, so so uh, so this is how we can uh, we can uh, we can access wordnets. And uh, WordNets has lots of information and lots of rules uh, in that. So you can uh, define is a relationship which is called hypernames. So if I say, uh, so this demo shows that panda, and uh, and uh, okay. So let's say uh, so that that is not redundant. So uh, let's say we want to say that how many synonyms are there for nice, and it will show you the hierarchy of all those synonyms. Uh, similarly for these nouns also. And it also uh, tells you that uh, what is the region and domain. So there are lots of information in WordNets you can get out of it. So what is the etymology of, of a word and how it is connected to, uh, which region it is connected to. So Pakka is a Hindi word, so its region is uh, India. So these kinds of information you can uh, take from WordNets. Uh, what I can do is I'll, I'll switch to these demos at the end so that it will be straightforward. Uh, so uh, again, uh, let's let's get back to uh, where we were. So WordNets, uh, we say that we have some problems with WordNet. So let's let's think about how do we associate with the word, right? Uh, if if I if I say a word, there there are lots of things in our human mind which goes inside it. So uh, we associate uh, it if it's a noun, we associate it with a person, and we uh, we create a context around it, right? And that context 
uh, could be a taste, smell, time, visual, or feelings. So there are lots of hooks uh, with a word uh, which, which gives us that, okay, this word represent this. So uh, what we can do programmatically? So there is a quote which says that you are an average human of uh, the five humans around you. And there are a similar quote in uh, natural language processing which says that you shall know a word by the company it keeps. So that, that is for there to uh, create uh, context. So how good, uh, how easy it is to create context, uh, we can actually create uh, co-occurrences matrices. And uh, it's uh, one of the most successful uh, uh, ideas of uh, NLP. So how do we uh, uh, calculate co-occurrence matrices is, is this way. So suppose we have a corpus and that corpus represent uh, these three sentences, which is I like deep learning, I like NLP, and I enjoy flying. So in that, uh, if, uh, if we create a, a matrix which has every single word uh, from that, so the dimension of the uh, matrix is again n cross n if you have n words. And uh, we are creating this co-occurrence matrix as one neighbor co-occurrence matrix. That means uh, every word which is just uh, adjacent to another word will uh, give a count uh, one, so and increase the count one. So you can do that for uh, higher uh, uh, context also. So if that matrix is there and so I, we represent our uh, complete corpus in that matrix. Again, there is a problem with that. Yes, we can do some uh, uh, analysis on that matrix. Again, we have converted our uh, corpus into uh, a matrix, a numbers, but, uh, and we have represented uh, all, the, all our text data into numbers, which actually capture the uh, context of the word. Again, it is very high, high dimensional if you have millions of, uh, if you have millions of words, again, it will be a million cross million matrix, and you won't be able to do much uh, processing on that. And if we run, uh, and this matrix will be actually sparse. So by sparse, I mean there will be lots of zeros because not every word is associated with every word, and they don't come together. So with lots of zeros, uh, if we run a classification algorithm, there will be a problem. I'll show a demo of uh, co-occurrence matrix, but at the last, because I have to again switch, switch back these things. Uh, so what we can do with co-occurrence matrices is, is uh, we can re reduce the dimension of a matrix always, right? So if we reduce the dimension, the matrix will be smaller and, uh, and uh, it's always, uh, uh, if you have a high dimensional data which, uh, which shows the dimension which we understand and if you reduce the dimension, there will be some latent uh, information there. So a dimension can be a dimension of similarity. So it's, it's quite abstract and we, don't, uh, we cannot understand which dimension it is, but we can reduce the dimension using SVD. So SVD is singular value decomposition. How many people know here SVD? Okay, great. Uh, I won't go into math of that. So SVD is a method by which you can actually reduce your matrix into a smaller matrix and uh, it will be having low dimension and those dimension will be representing uh, the most important features of, uh, of that matrix. So uh, any matrix you can actually represent in, it into uh, these three matrices and you can reduce the dimension. I won't go into math and this demo I'll show you later how we can calculate SVD through uh, Python and how we can represent the word in low dimension space. So uh, again, uh, well, we have another problem with SVD. So the problem with SVD is calculating the SVD on that high dimensional vector, high dimensional matrix. and uh, if you have, again, billion words, uh, converting into million words will again not solve problems, right? So billion by billion matrix, if you convert it to million by million matrix, it's still million by million matrix, and you can't uh, uh, do away with that. So again, inherent problem with SVD is calculations and iterativeness. Again, if I have a new sentence in my corpus, I have to calculate the SVD of the whole corpus again, and then uh, do this stuff. So this is where last two year research has uh, contributed. This is the algorithm called word to vec It's by Google and uh, uh, by Thomas Mikulov and Jeff Pennington. And there is another research happened in uh, uh, Stanford by uh, Richard Socher and Yosha Bangio, uh, which, is the, uh, which, which are very famous guys in NLP. So what they have done is instead of we calculating the lower dimension matrix, why don't we learn the lower dimension matrix uh, as it is. We don't go into high dimensional matrices at all, and we learn the low dimension matrices directly. 
So uh, they calculated, uh, they, uh, they devised this algorithm called word 2 vec or glove vector, global vector of words. It's actually very fast and you can do a lot of things with that. So what do we do in uh, word vectors is, we said right, uh, we can understand a word by the company it keeps. So instead of uh, going to the uh, singular value decomposition and calculating the co-occurrence matrix, why don't we just uh, predict the uh, our context? So there are two school of thoughts in word 2 vec again, say two algorithms, which is uh, one is called skip gram model. So what this skip gram model does is, suppose you have, uh, you, have uh, you take a sentence and you just say that I look at this sentence with the context of five. So if, you, if I have a center word, I look into three words on the left and three words on the right. And if I have a word and if I start predicting the words in my context uh, so that as much more I'll see those words together with that sentence, uh, together with that center word, we'll be, uh, we'll be having its probability increasing. So we, what we do is we maximize the log probability of the context of the word. So I, I'll represent it in a uh, pretty simple manner. Suppose this is the sentence, and uh, so sentence is very long, say it has lots of words, W12 to W12 or W100, but I'm only interested in uh, a, a context window of three. So I'll take this word, WC, and what I'll do is I, I'll create, uh, I'll run a log, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll run an optimization algorithm which will increase the uh, probability of the, I'm sorry, uh, which will increase the probability of these uh, uh, context words. Uh, it's, it's all going uh, uh, highly mathematical and it's actually very difficult to uh, give a demo on how we'll be uh, calculating it. But I'll be uploading all the IPython notebooks which, which can actually do all this stuff. And I'll show you a, a demo also, but that will, be, uh, that will not be too much informative in this uh, talk. Uh, but I'll be outside and I can, I can go through all those things. So what's good in word 2 vec is, uh, First of all, it is unsupervised. Uh, we don't have to tag our data, it's just dumb text. Uh, you just uh, give it to that. It will go word by word and predict the probabilities of which are the words which come with that. And, and uh, what happens with word 2 vec is they actually uh, create a low dimensional space. So that lower dimension space is, it depends on you which, uh, how much dimension you want. You want 1000 dimension or 300 dimension. So that will be, the, will be our vector instead of a complete one hot uh, vector which is the size of the vocabulary. So these lower dimensions uh, space are, can be anything. It can be a space of say a dimension of similarity. This dimension only shows the similarity between words or it can be a dimension of sentiment. This dimension shows that uh, these words are actually aligned with their sentiments or they can be all caps dimension. So in that dimension every single word will be capital. Or, uh, or it can be anything. So uh, it's up to you to uh, figure out and explore what, uh, what other uh, lower dimension space are actually talking about and they are abstract and very hard to find out. So uh, it was uh, there that uh, word to work actually captures the dimension of similarity, right? So uh, dimension of similarity is pretty broad. So it can be similar in anything and all these uh, algorithms they capture syntactical information as well as semantical information. So if I say syntactical information, singular or plural. So uh, after that, uh, after all these algorithms we, uh, we, we calculate a vector, right? For every word we have a vector which is lower dimensional vector, say 300 or 1000 dimension vector. So in word to vec uh, you, can, you can get a vector out of every word. So we said that our representation was wrong and we were not, uh, our vector representation of every word was not carrying any information. But after that, our vector representation of every word has a lot of information. So if I sub subtract that vector of apple minus vector of apples, it is exactly similar to vector of car minus vector of cars. And it's actually similar to family minus families. So that means it's a, so if I, if I, subtract one vector from another vector, it will be a dimension. Again, it will be a vector, right? And if we go into same dimension, uh, that dimension is actually capturing a singular plural relationship. So, and there are lots of interesting things you can do with that. Vector of shirt minus vector of clothing is equals to vector of chair minus furniture. So shirt is a type of clothing and chair is a type of furniture. Similarly, this is very uh, famous example. Sorry, there is a typo. 
So vector of king minus vector of men is actually equal to vector, vector of queen minus vector of woman. So it is actually calculating uh, here that uh, uh, all the semantical information, uh, which is not any way in syntactical information. So how do we calculate this dimension of similarity? So here the, uh, the, uh, the topic of, the, of this talk is ca solving logical puzzles through uh, natural language processing, right? So the, the logical puzzles which, uh, which you can solve are analogies and odd man outs through that. So how do we solve analogies? So suppose, uh, and how do we solve analogies uh, through our brain? If we have not seen that word, we cannot solve its analogy problem. And if we have not seen that word, we cannot solve its uh, uh, odd man out problem. So, sim so it's actually, uh, the, this limitation applies to that algorithm as well, which we human has. And uh, so, uh, so if, if man is woman and what is analogical to, uh, if man and woman and then what is analogical to king and what, right? So that will, uh, so answer is queen. So in word to egg, you can just simply uh, say, uh, add king minus men plus woman minus, so that will be queen. So if you can see that man and woman direction is exactly similar to king and queen direction. So if we have these three information, we can directly jump into queen. So in this way, you can solve your analogy problems. And in this way, you can also solve your uh, odd man out problem. So how do you solve odd man out problem is, uh, uh, suppose uh, when we were training our uh, word to work model, when we are calculating all these probabilities that which world comes uh, together, what we can do is we can just infuse some bad data random text, uh, not even random, which is wrong in grammar, right? So that is called negative sampling. So we are giving wrong data to the algorithm and we'll say that this is wrong. So we just tag that this is, say, uh, all the nice words are one, which is grammatically correct. All the wrong words are zero, tag to zero, which are grammatically not correct. So algorithm will learn that these words should not come together, which are, uh, which are not the part of the grammatical structure. So if we, if we go into odd man out, it will say that these words have not come together in any dimension. So this word is actually out of that. So I'll, uh, so I'll go through all these uh, uh, demos now so that we can see that in action. So uh, I was talking about SVD. Uh, is the font clear? OK. Uh, so these are three words. I like deep learning, I like NLP, and I enjoy flying, right? So using NumPy, uh, linear algebra library, we can directly calculate SVD. And these are our words, right? I like NLP deep learning. And all these words are there in, in, this, uh, uh, in this thing. And if I create a uh, this context matrix uh, manually, you can always uh, create it uh, programmatically. And if you calculate SVD of it, so this, U, uh, this, uh, this matrix, which is our context matrix X, is actually uh, is now break into three matrix U S N V V uh, dash and so U has all these eigen uh, vectors. So if we if we show these eigen vectors on this two dimensional plane, we can see that uh, these are now coming in some patterns. So this is very small and it will actually not capture any pattern. If you do this with large data, it will capture a lot of patterns. So those kinds of patterns you can see here. So, so these are uh, TSNE uh, visualization, which is used for visualizing uh, high dimensional data. So you, say, you can see that parliament and elections are coming together. And uh, banks and reporters are actually ministry and union. So all these things. So this is how we'll calculate SVD and uh, uh, move forward. But uh, so uh, I'll go into demo for word to egg. So Python has uh, an awesome library called GenSim, and you guys can go through that. It's very simple. And uh, Radim Rurik is the uh, author of that. So in uh, word to egg is actually written in C. So he has converted into Python, and it's actually very fast. And you can do uh, distributed programming also because. Word to work is limited to high volume data. So Google has, uh, Google has given a trained model of Word to work, which is 100 billion word model. It has 300 million unique uh, words, and it contains almost everything we speak today, even Indian words. So you can check your name there, 
uh, whose name you are similar to. So, so this is how, so you just load that model and that model is uh, there in binary form. And if you load that model and you say that you give positive as woman and king and negative as man, so you'll, you'll get that queen as the highest number. So th this is how you'll solve your analogies problems. And so this is your, uh, so it has another method called doesn't match, which is odd man out. So if I say breakfast, cereal, dinner, and lunch, so uh, which of these uh, does not fall into same category is cereal. And uh, you have similarity uh, um, is there. And it's a dictionary. So if you want to see that, uh, what is the raw vector of uh, this computer? So this is the vector. This is 300 dimension vector. So once you have vector, you can do all the stuff you, you want to do with your uh, machine learning libraries. So you can learn, uh, you can learn uh, sentiments. You can do uh, name entity recognitions and all. And, uh, it's ha it, and it is completely semantical. So sushi and shop and Japanese and restaurant are actually similar. And yeah, this is this I just cooked up. So because we were talking about Modi and Kejriwal a lot. So if I say which is most similar to Modi, so these are the results what to give. So uh, it depends on your data. So this data is actually last 10 year Google News data set. Uh, and they trained upon it, and it's a very huge model. It takes around uh, four, four or five GB of RAM in your computer. Uh, okay. I'll qu quickly uh, go through uh, one of the things uh, which is about word 2 vec is, or uh, maybe I should just, uh, Okay, so if you want to train your model, so uh, you have you have to create your uh, you you have to create your text to uh, uh, to uh, to sentences, and then you can train your own model and then do do queries on this. So I have other things which I can talk offline, and I'm open for questions right now. If you have any, hi. Uh, this is more of an announcement rather than a question. Um, my name is Amit Rao, and I'm a freelance technology consultant with a background in uh, research and development in natural language processing. So I have uh, created an open uh, space slot at 12.30 uh, for people who are interested in natural language processing and Python. So as Ispair said, there is a NLTK toolkit. And I think there's an opportunity to create a community of people who are interested in NLT, uh, NL uh, processing. So those of you who are interested, please uh, come to the first floor at 12.30. And we'll, we'll brainstorm on how we can contribute to this. Thanks. Sure, sure. Thank you. Uh, hello. Yeah. Uh, thank you for the great talk. Uh, I have two questions. OK. The first question is when we are talking about word to vec you said it is based on uh, context-aware predictions, okay. which is maximizing the likelihood of a word yes. nearby. Right. So uh, the idea that uh, was responsible for the word to vec word to vec was that the original co-occurrences model was very huge to store, right? right. It was n-square impl implementation. Correct. So uh, can you tell me how exactly they are storing the context out of a word in word to vec So uh, word to vec is, is a neural network. Yeah. So the algorithm is neural network. So initially, you give one hot encoding as your first layer. Second layer is your dimension. Suppose you want 300 dimension vector, you uh, train it to just 300 dimensions. And after that, uh, you just output that word again. So uh, once you are calculating gradient descent, and that time you'll ca uh, calculate gradient descent or any optimization on the weights of maximum likelihood of your context words. So, aren't so, we, oh, sorry. so, so you'll save that as NumPy arrays. OK, so aren't we actually constraining the model uh, to understand uh, uh, the limit of context out of a word? So I I there is a possibility a word is associated with another word which we are not allowing it to train on because we are putting a constraint of so, uh, so that depends on your uh, computational power. Okay, so your context is free. You can take a hundred, uh, hundred left and hundred right word context, and you can increase your dimension to say two thousand or five thousand. Right. So, so that is that is, that is uh, tuable. That that is a parameter which is in there in algorithm. So, and uh, one last thing. Yeah. Uh, when you were talking about the vectors in n square uh, co-occurrences. So you uh, gave an example of, say, the word is nice and it is at the 30th index. So there will be a 1 on that point. So that will generate an n-square matrix, right? Right. So uh, uh, right now I was thinking, uh, 
if we take a straight out single vector where uh, words are indexed with their index number only. So Correct. nice is a vector that is connected directly to a uh, position 30 Correct. in a linear index, right? And uh, to associate a word, we can add it index. We can add the indexed weight. Suppose there are 100 words and uh, this thing is at 30. So its indexed weight is 0 0.3. And we want to associate it like nice weather. Weather is at 70th index. So it is 0 0.7. So we can add 30 and 0 0.7. So 30.7 the number itself is uh, some way signifying that nice weather is a context. Correct. So uh, I mean I don't know I just came up with it but right. that is a very nice way of linearizing a n square order problem. Correct. That is that is that is the way and uh, people are actually doing it but it's it's very limited to uh, your context. If you train a model that is only limited to your own context. It's not a generalized like where to work that you can do a lot of things. So in your view nice and weather you are giving the weights. You are not learning the weights automatically out of the uh, the corpora, right? Yeah. Uh, it's your view. So I can always disagree with your view that don't associate nice with weather. I associate awesome with the weather and I give 0.7. So there are these kinds of problems are there. Okay. Uh, one more question out here. Uh, up here, up here, on your right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. So uh. one of the things you talked about right now using these vectors, right? So you're associating some words in its neighborhood and you're predicting a likelihood that the similar words will appear next to it. Correct. Right. So how do you handle multiple uh, meanings, right? Like uh, nice, right? Nice could have three or four meanings. It could be nice as in nice. It could be something talking about a nice level where it does not mean good like the CPU nice level or you could be talking about the nice biscuit. Correct. Right. So when you create these vectors, how do you account for multiple meanings of words, which is fairly common? Apples, apples also a very common correct, example. Correct. Yeah. A that and B uh, computational uh, performance versus uh, its like accuracy, right? Versus say a posting list and uh, the word net with links on the graph. Right. What, what would its state of be? Uh, so these problems are there. Uh, so uh, disambiguation of the word. So this problem is there, but what you can do is once you have these word vectors which actually have some information about that word, you can again train them. So word vector is not a trained model, it's actually words. Uh, so whatever the words you are saving in your vocabulary as one out encoding or in word nets, you can have word to vec and then again train your disambiguation algorithms. Uh, just to, sorry to interrupt, uh, actually we are like really short in time. You can take these questions yeah, sure. afterwards, okay? So just don't be mad at me because we're really short in time, okay? So uh, thank you for such a nice talk. Can we have a round of applause? Thank you, guys.